In this video, we are going to talk all about the mass spectrometer as well as mass spectrometry and how we can apply that to solving the structure of organic compounds. So just a bit of a reminder, the mass spectrometer is an instrument that measures the relative masses of atoms or ions. And what it's actually measuring is not just the mass, it is a mass to charge ratio of ions that are formed from the molecule, but the charge is typically plus one. So when we talk about the values, we relate them to just a mass. So we have seen in the past a application where we have figured out the relative abundances of different isotopes for an element using the MS spectra. But we also can, and we also have, sorry, seen a application of finding the relative molecular mass of a compound from a mass spectrometer. But we haven't seen the application where we use MS data to determine the organic structure of a particular compound. So this is what we're gonna focus on in this video. So in terms of how the mass spectrometer works, part of the function is the ionization stage. And so what happens in this stage is a beam of high energy electrons are gonna bombard the sample and they're gonna knock electrons off the atom or the molecule. And in the process, they form these positive ions. So I think it's really important to note here that it is only the positive ions that are detected in a mass spectra. So you get all these different types of fragmentation happening and you can get fragmentation happening where you get molecules breaking up into smaller chunks or smaller pieces. And by looking at the mass differences between those pieces, we can start to piece together the puzzle of what that structure is. So in terms of a fragmentation pattern, this is uh, mass spectrum shown for ethanol. And so you can see a bunch of different lines here shown. In terms of what's going on here, the largest mass peak, so the one here for this one shown at 46, corresponds to the parent ion. So what that means is no fragmentation has happened and that is your molecular mass. So you can get that information for a molecule from the mass spectrum. You are just looking at the very last mass to charge ratio that happens in your mass spectrum, whatever that biggest number is, that is your molecular mass. The other fragments then that are produced here are other positive ions that are produced by the fragmentation. So Ethanol is broken down into all of these different pieces and so it fragments into all of these pieces and that's what's being detected by the mass spectrum. And remember, all of these peaks are only due to positive ions that are being formed by this fragmentation. So let's now look at the rest of the mass spectrum for ethanol and start trying to piece together what all of these pieces mean and how they all fit together. So in order to do that, we do need the structure of ethanol. I'm gonna write it below the mass spectrum here. And it's important for us to point out here that when molecules fragment, they fragment in chunks. So the carbon with the hydrogens attached tend to fragment off together. You don't tend to get fragmentation between those carbon-hydrogen bonds. You will get them between carbon-carbon bonds. You'll get them between, say, carbon-oxygen bonds or other functional groups will fragment. But that carbon-hydrogen bond tends to not fragment. It might a little bit, but it's not really detectable in the mass spectrum. 
So you want to think about where those breaks are in your structure and how you're sort of explaining this structure with your mass spectrum. So to start and explain this peak at 45, that's going to be a loss of hydrogen because the difference between 46 and 45 is one and that corresponds to the mass of a hydrogen. And so in order to get that fragment, what happens is it's broken off between the oxygen and the hydrogen. And so what you're detecting there is the positive ion of CH3, CH2, O plus. If you added that up, that has a mass of 45. Okay, and that's what you see at that peak at 45. Now, it could also fragment where it cuts here. So when you have the loss of OH, you are left with a CH3, CH2 plus ion. And if you added that up, that has a mass of 29. So this peak at 29 corresponds to the loss of OH. Now, you, when you get to things that are a little bit more hydrophobic and you get fragmentation happening between carbon-carbon bonds, it can go one of two ways. The positive charge can go to one side or it could go to the other side. So when that breaks there and fragments, you can either create a CH3 plus ion or you could create a CH2OH plus ion. And so this CH3 plus ion has a mass of 15. So that's where that peak is coming from. And the CH2OH ion has a mass of 31. So that is where that ion's coming from. So it's about kind of thinking about how the molecule will fragment and trying to match that data back up to the different pieces within your mass spectrum. So the good news is that there are very specific kinds of fragments that are very typically lost in mass spectrometry. And you are given um, a whole bunch of different fragments within the data booklet. So you can take a look here if you have the mass lost of 15 that corresponds to a methyl group or a CH3+. If you lose 17 that corresponds to an OH. So this can be pretty helpful in trying to think about those different fragments and what is being lost. Okay. So we're going to take a look at a couple more examples in this video. The first one is C5H12. And so what we're really being asked to do here is take a look at the mass spectrum, think about what each peak represents, and then we want to also try and deduce the structure because we're just given a chemical formula here. So sometimes it's useful to look at just the peaks themselves and try and match them up with those fragment data from the data booklet. And sometimes the strategy that works well is taking the difference between the peaks. So it's a little bit of trial and error. With this one, looking at the difference between the peaks actually gives you a lot of really good information. So for example, if you look at the difference between 72 and 57, that's a difference of 15. It's going down by 15. So that kind of gives you an indication that a CH3 group is being lost. If you look at the difference between 57 and 42, again, that's going down by 15. So that's another methyl group lost. And then you look at this one here. Again, a difference of 15. So that is another methyl group lost. And then if you look at this last peak, it is 15. So that is going to be the ion corresponding to the CH3+. Plus. Okay. And then the difference between 27 and 15 is only 12. And so that's not in your chart, but we know that a carbon has a mass of 12. So 
We've now got all these different fragments that we can piece together as a structure. So if you have just a carbon and you have four other methyl groups, that's going to give us this structure here. So it's going to be branched and it's going to have four methyl groups coming off of a central carbon. All right, last example, it's a little bit different in terms of the wording and in terms of what's being asked, but really the kind of approaches that we've been using in the other problems are going to work here as well. Uh, important information. So empirical formula of CH2O, and we have a simplified mass spectrum. We gotta deduce the molecular formula and then give a possible structure for this compound. Now, since our highest peak is 60, that is the molecular mass of our compound. And if we look at our empirical formula, our empirical formula only has a mass of 30. We've got 12 for carbon, 16 for oxygen, and then we have two hydrogens that are one each. So that's actually a doubling effect there which means that the molecular formula is double the empirical formula, or it's going to be C2H4O2. Okay, so that's given us some information. Um, and now what we want to do is take a look at some of the pieces. So we can identify this fragment at 15, because that corresponds to a methyl group. And that one kind of always stands out if you have it. It's a really useful one to take a look at. You could also look at the difference between 60 and 45, and that's a difference of 15, which is a methyl group being lost. And then instead of looking at the difference between 45 and 43, what's useful here is looking at the difference between 60 and 43. So that's a loss of 17. And if you go back to that fragment chart from the data booklet, that actually corresponds to an OH group being lost. So that has now given us some really good information about our structure. And if we piece all of these things together, and also taking into account that this 45 if you look back at that fragmentation chart, also corresponds to a COOH group. So taking all of this into account would give you a carboxylic acid structure. So you would end up with ethanoic acid.